really want to welcome everyone to MIPI DEF CON 2022. I'm Justin Endo, MIPI DEF CON Chair, and thank you for attending this year's event. So building off of our experience at last year's virtual event, our team has worked hard to prepare a great agenda filled with relevant presentations and member demos with a panel to end each day. And we look forward to an informative two days. Today's conference segment will last four hours and we'll have presentations with breaks interspersed throughout the day. There will be a live Q&A to follow each session with the exception of our first session, the State of the Alliance. And all presentations will be available at mitbi.org following the event. So if you missed a session, or want to share with a friend, feel free to do so after the event. We'd like to give a big thank you to our media and industry sponsors. And without further ado, please welcome Peter Lefkin, MIPI Alliance Executive Director, who will present the State of the Alliance. Take it away, Peter. Thanks, Justin. And uh, first, I'd like to thank uh, Justin, all of the steering committee members, uh, as well as the MIPI team, including Dervla, Lisa, Christina, and Charmian. Um, you know, eight hours of, of a virtual conference uh, takes a, a good amount of effort. So I'd like to thank everybody. Um, my role today is really to uh, give a bit of an update, uh, current view of uh, MIPI Alliance um, and where we are. So let me start into that. Um, MIPI Alliance, uh, I'm not going to give the whole history of the Alliance, but um, the Alliance really started in 2003. And our first reason for being was the uh, standardization of cameras and displays into mobile devices. And at the time, there were uh, different camera interfaces for each uh, vendor's mobile phone. And it really wasn't scalable to uh, the, the depths that we see today. Uh, fast forward um, a good um, 20 years. Uh, coming up next year, we'll be celebrating our 20th anniversary. We see at least one MIPI specification in every smartphone today. Uh, that's not a, a, an aspirational statement, that's, that's real. There's probably more than one in each mobile phone that you see in the market. Um, we've developed more than 50 specifications covering a full range of interfaces and applications needed for, for mobile devices. As you'll see through the, the next two days, uh, mobile still remains and is our, our reason for being. Um, but as mobile has evolved over the past 20 years, the influence on other industries and the implementation of our specifications in a wide range of applications has really evolved as well. On the left, you see a, a mobile system diagram. We have um, diagrams for IoT and automotive as well, but again, real focus on, on mobile. But as, as we've evolved, as I indicated, MIPI specifications have been leveraged in automotive, industrial, in consumer devices, in IoT, uh, medical, even the aviation industry. Uh, on a, a weekly and, and monthly basis, I get surprised by uh, the types of companies joining MIPI and the applications and interest areas uh, that they uh, are are in involved in. Um, MIPI specifications are are royalty free among members, and we have specifications that are are member only specifications. But we also have a wide range of debug and and software specifications that are publicly available. And our, our MIPI I3C specification uh, I3C Basic is also uh, publicly available as well. One of, one of the interesting things about MIPI is our membership year over year ha has grown. I, I don't think that there was in the 20 years, there was not a, a down year in membership. Um, in 2021, we had a, a 10 and a half percent, our, our largest growth um, from a membership perspective in 2021. Over five years, we've had a, a 27 0.1% uh, uh, growth. Last year, we finished the year at 399 members. We were just one off of the 400 milestone. Um, uh, right now, as of today, we have 408 members, 60 new members. So there's there's a good amount of uh, new companies who come in. Some companies uh, leave the organization, maybe um, you know business needs with regard to maybe change over time. And we've had good uh, increase in the number of uh, contributors, those members who are actively contributing in 
uh, the working groups and the, and the development of the specifications. Our ecosystem has evolved as well. As you can imagine, when we first started the organization in 2003, it was primarily led by the application processor developers, uh, the device OEMs, uh, and the semiconductor companies. That was really the, the heart of uh, MIPI at that time. Uh, still remain strong uh, members and, and uh, leaders in the organization. Uh, but as MIPI specifications evolved uh, and were implemented widely across the ecosystem, so did the ecosystem evolve. Today, we have test equipment companies, test labs, software providers, uh, wide range of consumer electronic companies, IP and VIP providers, uh, as well as automotive uh, OEMs and tier one suppliers and a, and a large range of uh, about half of our members uh, indicate that they are in the automotive sector, producing products, uh, developing products in the automotive sector, and the same for IoT. So as you can see, our, our members leverage um, the implementation of the specifications, not just in mobile, but in also beyond mobile applications. This slide represents really um, about a, a third of our membership. So the board, uh, including Intel, Qualcomm, Bosch, Samsung, ST, Synopsys, and Texas Instruments. Uh, the current contributor, contributor members uh, also there, um, you know, representing again those companies who are participating in the, the weekly meetings um, to develop and evolve our specifications. This list of technical working groups, and this is as of today, we have 14 technical working groups um, directed by a board of directors, and we have three steering groups. So the technical steering group, marketing steering group, as well as a FI steering group with uh, a number of our, our FI working groups. In addition, we have a number of other subgroups uh, that are within uh, each of the working groups, uh, depending on the level of activity, depending on the focus area. Um, so in any given week, we you know, have a difficult time finding new time slots for uh, meetings that are uh, able to be scheduled for, for a global organization like we are. It is an active organization. It's diverse. Uh, there are many members who really uh, focus on you know, one area, uh, they may be focused in camera, uh, uh, security, or uh, I3C. And so, but we also have a, a, a good number of companies who cross uh, many of the different technical working groups um, on a day-to-day -day basis. The other thing that has evolved over time is, is liaisons and organizations that we work with to extend the MIPI ecosystem. Uh, today, we have 13 technical liaisons. Um, I work uh, daily, and this is an increasing uh, body of work within the organization. A uh, number of organizations, um, some of those you, you recognize, some you may not. Um, but this goes two ways. One is um, the organization uh, leveraging a MIPI specification in their specifications, mostly by reference, um, and also uh, MIPI leveraging uh, their specifications. Like for DMTF, we leverage their SPDM security specification. Uh, again, this expands over time, um, and we have a number of other you know liaisons that are uh, you know in the formative stages, not yet uh, formalized. Um, but again, these are these are fairly active liaisons, um, you know, uh, related to our specifications. A large number of the liaisons, Etsy, uh, JEDEC, um, let's see, uh, TCA, leverages I3C Basic, and that's that's one of the the specs that is driving a lot of the liaison work, a lot of interest in. I3C and, and leveraging I3C in the, in the marketplace for different applications. Here's the, the team uh, that supports the organization. I won't go through the whole list, um, but a, a, a good group, uh, a lot, you know, growing group of, of individuals who 
provide support uh, to the technical working groups, the technical operation teams. You'll see them if you're active in the working groups. Um, and then the marketing membership and events team uh, leading the development of this effort or educational activities, focusing on membership, um, you know, as well as marketing communications from a member communications perspective. We also uh, have engaged uh, technical consultants in, in IoT, as well as a, a new engagement with regard to focusing on, on camera uh, within the market. Now I'll focus in, and bring uh, current uh, some of the recent milestones uh, in the organization. Um, yeah, we're very pleased to be able to return to in-person meetings. I, I recognize that this is a uh, virtual DevCon conference. We're looking forward to, I believe, next year getting back to face-to-face -to -face DevCon events. I think uh, certainly over the past two and a half to three years that we were unable to meet, uh, it was actually some of our most productive uh, years in terms of spec development, in terms of activities. Uh, MIPI certainly didn't stop during uh, the COVID pandemic and, and our inability to meet. I think one of the things that it did uh, people did realize is that the face-to-face -face meetings are really important, uh, not just to the development of the specification, but also evolving uh, the ecosystem, the business relationships, and the partnerships that uh, you know are spurred at those meetings are incredibly important. Um, this year, uh, we had a leadership transition from Joel Hulot, um, who retired from ST. Uh, Sanjeev Desai's first uh, meeting, face-to-face -face meeting, was the, the June meeting in Munich. Um, and like to offer congratulations to both. Um, we also had the I3C Interop workshop, uh, annual award ceremony, which was very good to be able to get back to in person. And we also had a demo day in conjunction uh, with the member meeting. So we had the opportunity because we hadn't had the face-to-face -face meetings, we had the opportunity for member companies to demo uh, current products. Um, and really it was a member to member engagement uh, in, uh, we'll also have upcoming meetings. Uh, we welcome those uh, individuals who are contributor members to Vancouver in October, 2022. So that's coming up in the next month. Also uh, Lisbon in March, 2023. Our strategic priorities, really, we've uh, focused in in four areas, uh, maybe five if you, there is uh, one that has two uh, that are related. But I'll, I'll go through a little bit of, of these, and you'll see this across the next two days. Uh, our strategic priority um, for development for 2023 and 2024 will start later this year. Uh, in Q4 into Q1, ideally by March of uh, 2023, we will have finalized the strategic priorities for the, the coming two years. This enables us to really focus the organization on uh, both activities that are in current development or evolving, and also new areas um, and new areas of focus for the Alliance. So the, the four are technical roadmap, adoption enablement, which, you know, DevCon is one example of uh, activities that support adoption enablement, uh, security, as well as uh, beyond mobile, uh, focused in, in two areas, automotive and IoT. From a technical roadmap perspective, um, we I believe this year, year to date, there are nine specifications that have been adopted. Uh, we expect 12 uh, total by the end of the year, 2022. There are a number, a uh, large number that are under development uh, into 2023. Uh, there were 17 adoptions in, in 2021. I think that was a, a record year or a near record year. Um, we also, over that time, uh, adjusted some of our language um, to, to be more inclusive, and those, those updates are on track as well. Um, liaison milestones, I mentioned some liaisons before this year uh, with regard to MIPI I3C BASIC and Etsy SSP, uh, the uh, smart card platform. 
um, as well as um, USB I3C device class specification and JEDEC UFS continuing their development uh, with MIPI Unipro and MFI. And so um, there's an opening session tomorrow that I encourage you all to attend, which is what's new and, and coming up on the MIPI Phi roadmap. So leadership of uh, AC and uh, DeFi as well as uh, MFI will be providing updates on, on their activities. Security has been a, um, an area that has really uh, come into its own uh, focused uh, on camera and security for CSI2. Um, contributor members are, are invited to join the security working group. And, and this is one that really has evolved from a, what we call a birds of a feather. So bringing uh, the topic to mind and, and saying, is there something for MIPI to do in this area? And, and security, while it's been discussed over time within MIPI, uh, was always sort of uh, dealt with you know, outside of MIPI Alliance. We didn't have a specific security working group. So today that's changed. There's a lot of interest in that uh, driven by uh, securing camera for ADAS applications for other uh, camera related applications as well. Uh, tomorrow, uh, I believe you'll see, so on the, yeah, or today actually, uh, you'll see MIPI CSI2 security framework. So uh, the chair and, and co-chairs of the security framework, uh, the security working group will provide an update. So I encourage those interested in security and uh, to get a, uh, to attend that session as well. Talked a bit about Beyond Mobile and, and driving uh, MIPI specifications uh, into other uh, industries. Automotive, there will be a focus today. Uh, we also have an upcoming uh, workshop uh, focused on automotive. So uh, be on the lookout for that uh, similar session to, to DevCon, but solely focused on, on automotive. Uh, so you'll see that we have uh, presentations today on MIPI Automotive Certies solutions, new development in AFI and mass uh, connectivity framework, uh, looking at testing for MIPI automotive sensor interfaces, and also MIPI sensor solutions for autonomous driving. So, you know, we have a, a, our, our working group chairs, our working group leadership, but also member companies who are, are, who are developing and, and working within uh, with MIPI specifications. And that's really the intent of DevCon is to um, look beyond just the development of the specification uh, to implementation and adoption and driving that as well through education. The other beyond mobile focus for maybe Alliance is, is IoT. Uh, and in particular, we're looking at, you know, industrial IoT. Uh, you'll see a lot more uh, of our uh, activities uh, in IoT over the coming months and into 2023 as well. Uh, we have an IoT uh, interest group that's part of the marketing steering committee. Um, and that's that's also open to adopter members. So we encourage um, adopter members who uh, don't typically participate in, in the working groups to join the IoT interest group if you are. Uh, you'll see on the left side also uh, achieving power efficiency. It's a white paper in IoT devices with MIPI I3C. Uh, so feel free to, to download that white paper if you're interested. With regard to adoption enablement, um, this has been a, a growing focus for MIPI uh, over the years. Obviously, DevCon, as I indicated, is, is part of that. Um, in earlier years, MIPI was really focused on developing the specifications, making sure they were fit for purpose first for mobile and then for other application areas. Um, in, in the recent years, um, past five to seven years, we've definitely been turning attention to, you know, education um, and adoption enablement. Um, so participating in industry conferences, uh, just last week, we participated in, in AutoSense and, and um, a couple of other conferences that were last week in automotive. So now as, as uh, events and trade shows are getting back to in-person, 
uh, you'll certainly see MIPI uh, more present at, at some of those conferences. I mentioned the AFI you know, Automotive Industry Forum. Uh, that will be coming up. It's a little small. Uh, while well, we had it this earlier this year, we're going to have an automotive forum uh, later this year as well. Uh, we also had webinar on achieving optimal energy and efficiency in IoT. Um, also, publishing technical supporting documents. Our, our working groups not only develop specifications, but they also develop application notes uh, and other you know, implementation guidelines. Uh, we have a, a growing uh, article as we use the, the MIPI blog to place articles that and reference resources that may not be you know, necessarily pressworthy, but are uh, important for the ecosystem to obtain and to find out. Uh, and again, I mentioned the IoT white paper. Uh, there's the automotive workshop that I've teased a couple of times now on the 15th of November, uh, 2022. So uh, get that on your calendar. Uh, that will be a culmination of uh, our focus on automotive and, and giving an update on, on where we are. So looking forward to 2023, um, I mentioned that uh, we're projecting today uh, 15 plus specifications. So another busy year for MIPI Alliance. Um, we expect releases in audio, Soundwire, uh, so Swiss, Soundwire i3s. We expect the MIPI security specification uh, to be pub published in 2023, uh, MIPI A5e 2.0. Uh, new A5 PALs, uh, as well as updated camera and display service extensions. So uh, our specifications continue to evolve. Our members bring new requirements uh, to the table um, to, to ensure that the MIPI specifications meet their product development needs, as well as you know the industry needs uh, for the specifications. Uh, we will have uh, a DevCon, an in-person DevCon event, uh, in 2023. And as I mentioned before, um, this will be our 20th anniversary. And, um, you know, we've seen so much change, as I've indicated, in the mobile ecosystem. Uh, companies that were leaders in mobile uh, are no longer. Uh, some companies that were non existent when MIPI first started in mobile are very uh, strong in mobile today. Uh, all through that time, MIPI has been able to create the infrastructure to develop the specifications that are needed for mobile and, and other ecosystems. So our members come together, it's a collaborative effort, uh, come together uh, to develop the specifications. Certainly there's uh, spirited technical debate uh, and spirited contributions as, as with any organization, uh, but ultimately they're collaborating to bring a, a common specification to the market and then compete on products and applications in the market in their products and devices. Uh, so it's a unique environment. There are, you know, as we, as I indicated before, we have liaisons with other organizations that are similar, but in very specific areas um, that we work with. So um, yeah, I, I encourage you, if you are interested, I think one of the sort of, um, benefits of, of MIPI membership is really understanding where the industry is going, where are members participating, where are the specs being driven. Uh, certainly understand that it does take effort, uh, resources. It's not just the membership fee, it's engineering resources, it's travel. So it, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a good uh, commitment but if you're in this business, I think it, it's important to, to join. We have a number of member, we have three member meetings each year, um, and we rotate those around the world. So we have uh, March in Lisbon, San Jose, where the developer conference will be. Uh, so that will be in uh, June, 20, week of the 26th through 30th in San Jose. And we also have Osaka, uh, Japan, that you know has been, you know, some of these meetings, all of these meetings actually had been moved out from prior years that we weren't able to meet. So we adjusted the locations in the year. Um, so with that, uh, I'd like to thank everybody for attending my session. Uh, I'd like to thank you also for the time that you're devoting today 
uh, to attend the DevCon event. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me directly. I think uh, many of you uh, get a lot of emails from me over time. Uh, so I appreciate that and appreciate your, your interest in MIPI. Um, and again, if I can be of assistance, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you very much, everybody.